Guys, how we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. Today we are going over a whole bunch of pro tips, all for tractor loaders. Tips to operate more efficiently, tips revealing those hidden features, and tips to operate more safely. But before we get to that burning question of the day, how do you store your loader bucket when you're not using it? Do you curl it all the way up and sit it down and let that rain and snow get inside and freeze it up? Or do you roll it all the way forward and allow those loader cylinders to be fully exposed to the elements? Or do you keep yours stored inside where it really doesn't matter? Either way, leave a comment down below. And if you would take a moment, hit that like button right down below and also subscribe if you wanna see more cool tractor videos. And as always, if you're looking for something cool for your tractor, read through that description right down below, all sorts of helpful links down there, or head on over to goodworkstractors.com. I'm gonna demonstrate this in just a second, but it's gonna make a big difference if you have your load way back here or way out here. You're not gonna lift nearly as much weight at the end of forks or if you have a grapple that's kind of way out in front versus if you have everything tucked up tight or right up in here as close as you can go. When you're reading those specs online, they're talking about max lift right back here as high as it can go. That's not realistic. We're all gonna have something at least on forks out here, maybe at the tips or in a bucket maybe in a grapple. Let me go ahead and demonstrate what I mean. We're gonna put a crate of suitcase weights out here right at the very end, see how high we can lift it up. And we're gonna put that crate right up tight against here and see how high we can lift it up at that point. Okay, so we have about 1,800 pounds of suitcase and wheel weights stacked right here. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drive the forks underneath just to pass the midpoint. So that way, everything doesn't wanna tip off the end but we'll see how high it'll lift. Then we'll repeat the process. We'll scoot everything as close to that pallet fork frame, as tight to the tractor as we can, and repeat the process. I'm gonna do this at full throttle, both applications. I'm gonna lift it as high as I can and try to keep it relatively level as I'm lifting. Okay, so let's just measure to the uh, the bottom of the fork frame, or the fork tine, 29 and a quarter inches. That's the ballpark, it might not be perfectly level, but close enough. Okay, so basically 70 inches now, so Roughly 29 inches before, roughly 70 inches now, 40 inches higher. So as you can see, this demonstrates the difference in lifting capacity of your loader if you have something tucked right back tight to the loader arms or if you have something way out in front. Now I use this tip right here all the time and that is gonna be adjusting your throttle. Most of the time my throttle is in the middle, sometimes even all the way down to idle. You don't really need to be running wide open throttle very often. Keeping it in the middle, keeping it towards the bottom here of the spectrum is going to give you a lot better control of your loader joystick, the loader operation and function. So if you wanna make fine tuned micro adjustments, say if you have pallet forks on, it could even be a snow pusher, it could be a bucket, it doesn't matter. If you wanna have better control over angling that attachment connected to your front end loader, lower down your throttle, get more fine tuned control. Now, if you need to do some grading or some digging into the earth with your bucket, this long flat edge here is not really well suited for that. I mean, it'll, it'll certainly grade and, and, and clip some dirt off, some gravel, whatever you need to do. But if you take a very deep and aggressive angle trying to take off more than you can really chew, it's gonna be very challenging and very frustrating for you. So if you wanna be successful with digging down into the earth, or maybe you're just trying to really scrape up a pile or just dig a trench or whatever you're looking to do, take off shallow bites. Have a real shallow approach like what you can see here, maybe just an inch or two, you're gonna have a lot more success just biting off small amounts of material versus trying to take off a big chunk at one time. So as you can see, this is a much more aggressive angle and not gonna be very successful for you. Don't do this. <coughs> However, if you plan to do a lot of digging, then get yourself something like what you see right here, a heavy hitch tooth bar. You could get one of those piranhas, get some sort of serrated cutting edge or some way to kind of break up that flat line that you have on the front of a traditional bucket. It's gonna make that digging power, that digging capability dramatically different. It's gonna just allow you to rip right through or dig into the rock and the, 
the dirt and the combination of, of all those materials and just rip through there and have a lot more success. It'll make you a lot more efficient. It's going to save your bucket edge as well. They make these tooth bars and all sorts of different sizes for different with compact tractor buckets and John Deere, Kubota, Mahindra, Coyote, all the above. So with Heavy Hitch, anything you order there, you get 5% off with code GWT. Order one of these tooth bars from heavyhitch.com. So how should you tackle a pile of material? Now, <laughs> all we have out here right now is a pile of snow. So maybe you're dealing with a pile of mulch. Maybe it's a pile of dirt. Maybe that pile of dirt's been sitting there for three years before you finally got to it. So there's a lot of variables, a lot of factors that go into it. If you should just dig right in from the bottom, or maybe you're better off going to the top and kind of back dragging almost uh, some material down so it's nice and loose and then going into it. It could be a lot easier to pick up that way. You do want to be careful if you do have a very large pile and not have it collapse in on you if you dig out the bottom first. Safety first as always, but a couple different ways to go about it. Make sure you just kind of go into it with a train of thought. Don't put yourself in a precarious situation. So what you might have seen here is this is a pretty hard packed pile towards the bottom. And when I dug into the bottom, I was sitting there spinning my wheels, putting a lot of extra wear on the tires, maybe strain on the tractor itself and not getting very far. So it was a lot more effective when I scraped some off the top, made it kind of loose and then went in and dug it up. So you'll figure that out as you go, but just be aware it could be more efficient to scrape some off the top versus digging right in from the bottom. I want to go over a handful of maybe hidden or obscure features that you see them on your tractor, maybe you overlook them completely, but they're there, let's go over them, they're going to help you out, they're going to make you more efficient as well. So first one up is going to be the bucket level indicator, this piece of steel right here. You're going to have different versions depending on the model of tractor, so it's just a steel rod that you can adjust to different lengths depending on the attachment you have connected to your loader. So the point of it, bucket level indicator, is based on using a bucket and when you have it on the ground, making sure that it is actually level with the ground and so you know because it's kind of hard from the operator station to see if you're digging in or if you're raised up a little bit to get that right amount of perfection. Now this bar is adjustable for a reason because a bucket is going to have a different level from a set of pallet forks or a snow pusher or another attachment you might throw on the front. So you have a little tightening nut right here that you can either lengthen or shorten this rod just to get it set up the way that you need to for your individual attachments. However, a good idea as well, if you don't want to have to monkey around with uh, loosening this up, adjusting it and, and tightening it back down is you can actually just wrap some different colors of tape around here for your different attachments. That way you have a, a nice idea of when you're going to be level for your forks, for your pusher, for your bucket. So most of you probably think there's four functions on your loader joystick. You can raise and lower, and you can curl and roll. But there's actually two additional functions. The first one is going to be called float. And what that does is relieve the hydraulic down pressure. So if you are trying to push your loader into the ground, you can put it into the float position. It'll relieve that down pressure. It's simply going to be gravity, the weight of the attachment, just kind of keeping it on the ground. That's very useful if you're going to be using a snow pusher or a snow plow or even a snow blower, and you're just kind of grading along, and you want the implement to follow the contour of the ground without applying too much down pressure and digging into the surface. So to use float, what you simply do is push your loader joystick forward like you were going to lower it down, but then you just continue to push. You're going to feel a little bit of a release and it's going to stay in place in the detent position. It's going to stay there as long as you want to. Simply pull it back on the joystick and it'll put it back into normal operation. So that sixth function that's found on your loader joystick, similar to being able to push your loader forward and then into the float position, you can go out just like this and then into a power dump position or sometimes called a regem mode or a fast dump, but it's gonna make a big difference in how fast your bucket will empty out. So if you wanna have more control over just maybe slowly emptying your bucket out, if you kinda of are spilling it out gradually over an area, you can kinda of stick within the, the main or typical range of operation. You'll see this hard stopping point right here. What you can do, push it out even further, it's gonna go from slowly dumping out to a fast dump. Did you know that there's actually hidden storage right in plain sight on most of these front end loaders? I'm talking right here, and the torque tube. Get a couple of these little covers to put on the end, links down below for them, and you can store all sorts of crazy stuff in here. A little bit of rope if you want to, maybe some chain, bottles of water, or your favorite beverage. 
It depends on the loader torque tube that you have because some are bigger or smaller depending on what you have. But all this is is a PVC test plug. So you got a rubber seal on the inside. They make them in different dimensions. This one is three inches, but you know, two inches, four inches, two and a half, all that kind of stuff. You just tighten it down and it expands or presses out that rubber seal and tightens it up and locks it in place. So real cheap and easy to use. But when storage space is at a premium, it's nice to take advantage of every square inch you can. Now I know I've talked about this subject here before, but I want to mention it again because on an almost daily basis, I am asked about, can I get this attachment? Can I get that attachment from a front end loader, whether it's a pusher or forks or a grapple? And they don't know if they have a quick attach system. You know, I had a guy just today that, uh, had like a 1994 John Deere, and he didn't know if he had a quick attach. He'd never taken his bucket off. I said, send me some pictures showing the connection point between your loader and your bucket. And sure enough, he had a John Deere quick attach on there. So for the last almost 30 years, he could have had other attachments and been interchanging them on the front end of his tractor. So whether you have a John Deere quick attach or a skid steer quick attach or even a global quick attach, there's gonna be different options that are out there available for you. You could be relegated to a pinned on version, which basically doesn't have a way to quickly release. You could just have pins here that you have to hammer out and then change your bucket, you know, if you want to hook up forks or a pusher. But if you have a system like this, this is a John Deere quick attach. It's going to be the same spacing, the same hookup on a 1025, on a three series, even a four series. So I could take this bucket and put it on the big tractor and vice versa. You may want to watch out for weight because the bigger attachment is not going to work that well on a small tractor. But pay attention. You could have a quick attach. It's really easy to check it out and figure out if you do. You may hear people talk about or read about doing two functions at one time with your loader. And so what that means is you can raise and lower, so that'd be one function, and also curl or roll at the same time. And you can do that with both a John Deere or a Kubota or other manufacturers as well. I will say it's a there's a bit more of a learning curve to do so with a John Deere and the individual series of tractor could be easier or harder to do. And it also is gonna depend how much weight you have on your front end loader. So if you have a really heavy load, it's probably gonna be more challenging to do both functions at once. But where that can be beneficial is if you are trying to keep, say, a pallet or a skid, uh, maybe you have uh, pellets or salt or whatever it is, just a, a stack of something, some kind of material that you wanna keep level. If you tilt it this way or that way, it's all gonna go crash into the ground. So whether you have to move it from point A to point B or take it off of a trailer and move it to the ground, it's a very handy feature to kind of figure out and play with it on your tractor. This is where throttling down and having a lot more fine-tuned control over your loader joystick and the operation of it is going to help you out as well. Another way to go about doing two functions at one time while only having to use one function <laughs> is to pay extra and get something called an MSL loader or a mechanical self-leveling loader. So as you go up and down, so just simply raising and lowering, it's going to keep it level. So if you have a pallet full of material or a bucket full of material, it's going to keep it nice and flat or at whatever angle you have it adjusted to without having to worry about curling or rolling at the same time. Be advised, it is not a race when you're using a tractor, okay? These things are not speed demons, they're not racehorses. You need to go slow. The same thing can be said when using a front end loader. You can get out of control in a hurry if you're going too fast, especially if you're on bumpy terrain. You can hit a pothole, hit something hidden, maybe a stump, and get all kitty wampus and get knocked over. So it's very important if you're backing up as well. You know, even if you've backed up 20 times from that load of dirt that you're moving, who knows? Maybe your kid just decided to come out and see what was going on or your wife wanted to bring you a glass of lemonade. You know, the last thing you want to do is get complacent. Those momentary lapses in judgment because you look back over your shoulder 19 times, you don't want to do it the 20th time, that's when accidents happen. Now, it doesn't matter if you have forks, a bucket, a snow pusher. If you have those cylinders extended, these tilt cylinders right here where you have a lot of exposed rod, you want to be very careful and cautious when you're applying pressure to that. So when you're pushing down and backing up or pushing forward, be aware of that, okay? Because you could put more stress on there, there's more rod exposed, meaning there's less inside the cylinder there, so it could be easier to damage those. Again, it's another reason to go slow when you're moving along using a front end loader. There is no reason to be in a rush. Something that often goes overlooked is monitoring the tire pressure in your front tires. These take a big Big load, a lot of force, a lot of weight put on that front axle in these tires. So, so keep your eyes on that air pressure, especially in the spring and the fall seasons when you have really big fluctuations in temperature 
or even if you have your equipment stored inside and you come back outside. I wish I could recall, but there is some sort of a formula out there that um, determines for every, I think it's 10 degrees of temperature change, how much the air pressure is gonna change as well. One of my viewers actually mentioned that to me. I think he's up in the Grand Rapids area. He oversees all uh, the trucking operations, logistic operations for a big grocery chain that's in the area. and. I think he was laid up off work and his phone just kept blowing up because all the uh, tire pressure monitors on all the semi trucks just kept indicating low tire pressure because it was the fall and the temperature was dropping and so the air pressure was changing. So it's something to think about. It might go overlooked, but you want to keep your eyes on it. Now I would encourage you to check your brakes and check them often. If you have diabetes, you check your blood sugar, you check it off and there's no reason not to. You know, tractor brakes just are not the strongest thing in the world. They're not anything like a car, so don't think they are. In fact, I don't really trust them. You know, I mean, they're going to stop you to an extent, but I've been told more than one time by uh, somebody on the phone that they were going down a hill and just started going out of control and couldn't stop no matter how hard they pushed on the brake. This is one of those reasons, again, why going slow with a tractor is going to be working to your advantage. Because if you have a heavy load of dirt in the front of your bucket and you decide you got to go down this hill for whatever reason, you get out of control, things could happen bad in a hurry. So the slower you go, you know, that way if you maybe notice your brakes aren't working, you can quickly lower your loader to the ground and kind of use your bucket as a brake and just help get yourself to a stop without anything further happening. So again, the slower you go overall, just the more in control you're gonna be, you're gonna avoid those dangerous situations. Another important tip that could probably save your life and avoid a rollover situation is carrying your loads low to the ground, all right? Never carry them way up here. Keep them as low as you possibly can. And in fact, if it was just skimming the ground, if you didn't have to worry about the condition of it, I'm okay with that myself because you want to make sure your tractor is not going to tip over side to side or front to back. You know, again, a lot of us are dealing on uneven ground, uneven surfaces, so things are going to pop up. You got to plan for the unexpected. So give yourself every advantage you can to make sure you're operating safely. For those of you with quick park loaders where the entire loader can come off, say you want to mow your lawn, you want to take your entire loader off, make sure you have a bucket attached to this, okay? I wouldn't even put pallet forks on here. I wouldn't put a snow pusher. I would just put your bucket right on uh, to your carrier brackets before you remove this. It's going to be easy to take it off. It's putting it back on that's going to be more challenging. Sometimes you need the leverage of the flat bottom of the bucket to adjust the angle to seat correctly on the brackets. That's where it's going to come in handy. Going along with that, if you're going to be removing the entire loader from your tractor, that means you're going to have quick couplers as well to release. And so if you want to easily reinstall this loader and attach those quick couplers, you need to relieve the hydraulic pressure before disconnecting them. You can do so by working your loader joystick all around in every direction after the tractor is turned off while the, track, or while the loader is all the way down to the ground. Work that joystick and then disconnect. You'll thank me later for that one. I harp on this one all the time. I saved it for last because I don't want to bore you guys to death, but it's very, very important. You got to have ballast weight on the backside of your tractor. That front axle is going to be a fulcrum point like a teeter-totter, okay? So pay attention. If you are lifting something heavy in your bucket, a bucket full of dirt, lifting it way up, that pivot point there, the front axle, is going to want to teeter-totter like this. If you don't have a lot of additional weight on the backside, thousands of pounds for most tractors out there, you could be in a very dangerous situation, literally flip right over. It's happened, it happens all the time every year. Tractor accidents are not a joke. Rollovers are one of the leading causes of death in the farm industry every year. Now, if you're still with me right now, then you are well on your way to being a tractor pro. Now, this was certainly not an all-inclusive list of tips for loader operation. If you have more helpful tips, whether it's for efficiency or hidden features or for safety, leave a comment down below and read through those comments as well because a lot of folks ask questions. It'd be great to get your feedback on those. If you like what you see here, give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button right down below underneath the video if you want to see more cool tractor videos. And as always, if you're looking for something new for your tractor, read through the description as well. All sorts of helpful links right down there for great tractor products, places you can get 5% off with code GWT, or head on over to goodworkstractors.com. Thanks so much for stopping by. Until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.